While brainstorming ideas for an upcoming video, my buddy Joe asked me the question, has there ever been a scoreless game in the NHL? And this immediately intrigued me, causing me to do some digging. With the introduction of the shootout, it pretty much prevents this from ever occurring. So in order for a game to end in a 0-0 final, it would have to end in a tie. So I went back and looked for every single game that had ever ended in a scoreless tie, and in total, there were 193 games dating as far back as 1919. Now, talking about all 193 games would be astronomically difficult and most likely boring to sit through and watch, so instead, I'll be talking about the most significant 0-0 games in NHL history. We'll be looking at historical moments that occurred, as well as dig up up some fun facts you may not have known. But before we begin, this video is sponsored by NordVPN. Like most of you, I can't stand regional blackouts, and missing out on games you pay for is a major blow. But luckily, NordVPN's got you covered. NordVPN encrypts your internet traffic and hides your IP using an actual location, allowing you to bypass the pesky blackouts while also keeping you and your information safe and secure. You can also access geoblock content such as sports documentaries and television shows on streaming platforms such as Netflix and ESPN+. Plus, allowing me to watch my Calgary Flames play whenever, wherever, without worrying about restrictions. But while using the software, my personal favorite feature was its threat protection feature, which can help you avoid malicious websites and malware, which made me feel a lot safer while searching the web. You can use NordVPN on up to six different devices, allowing you to potentially watch up to six NHL games of your choosing. I've loved using NordVPN, and I highly recommend you go check them out, as when you use my promo code IDGT, you can get a two-year special offer plus four bonus months for free. It's risk-free with NordVPN's 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's go back. The 1919 Stanley Cup Final lives in infamy, as it's the only time in the history of the league where a Stanley Cup champion wasn't crowned. And this, of course, was due to the outbreak of the Spanish Flu. But there were a ton of other crazy moments that took place that are often forgotten about due to the impact the outbreak had on the series as a whole. For instance, just hours before Game 1 was set to begin, Seattle Metropolitan's leading goal scorer Bernie Morris was arrested by U.S. authorities for trying to dodge the draft. It didn't matter as Seattle would dominate game one, but Morris would ultimately be sentenced to two years of hard labor at the US military prison. Now, that story may seem insignificant, but fast forward to game four, and the Metropolitans had a 2-1 lead in the series, being one game away from winning the cup. But Game 4 would go on to be known as one of the greatest hockey games ever played, as both Hap Holmes and George Vesna played out of this world. The only goal scored came from Seattle's Cully Wilson, which got waved off, and after two overtime periods were played, no one else had yet to score. As players laid flat on the ice in pure exhaustion, the game would come to an end. Both teams received a standing ovation, and Game 4 would mark the only time in NHL history where a playoff game ended in a scoreless tie. Because of this, the NHL and PCHA had to figure out what to do next, and both sides agreed that in the future, teams would play overtime until a goal was scored, meaning that Game 4 of the 1919 Stanley Cup Final is the reason why playoff games can now go 6-7 to seven hours without a single goal being scored. And it wasn't until 1936 where the NHL got to see a game similar to Game 4. As when the Maroons and the Red Wings faced off in the semifinals, it would take six overtimes for a goal to finally be scored. That goal would win the series for Detroit, who eventually went on to win the Stanley Cup. Kilray loses control of the puck. It dribbles over towards Mudbun Bruneto, who comes tearing in. Bruneto takes a whack at it. He scores! Another influential game happened almost two decades later in 1931. In a matchup between the Boston Bruins and the New York Americans, New York would ice the puck 50 times in one game to protect a 3-2 lead, which would eventually become the final score. But 
how are they allowed to do this? Well, back in the 20s and 30s, there were no punishments given out for icing the puck because it wasn't against the rules to do so. And in fact, many coaches encouraged their players to do so as it was used as a defensive tactic late in games to protect a one goal lead. The fans, however, hated icings and showed their displeasure once the game was over, throwing tons of trash and debris onto the ice. Boston, also infuriated by the Americans, decided to protest the strategy when the two met again in January of that season. In that game, the Bruins would ice the puck a total of 87 times, resulting in a final score of 0-0. And many point to that game being the reason why the NHL decided to take a stand against icings. Because six years later in 1937, the NHL would create a rule that eliminated the delaying tactic, which would only be applied during even strength, but the league continued to modify it over time. As we've seen so far, scoreless games actually played a big role in creating major rules we know today. But with so many other scoreless games to choose from, let's shift our attention from historical facts to some fun, unknown facts. A few months ago, I made a video talking about the NHL's first ever outdoor game. Well, in 1949, the NHL's last ever Christmas Eve game would take place, and the final score of the historic matchup was none other than 0-0. Both goaltenders would be credited with a shutout, and a game would never get played on Christmas Eve again. And speaking of shutouts, some pretty memorable goaltenders got some historic shutouts of their own, such as a Genny Nabokov, who recorded his first career shutout in his NHL debut with the Sharks, doing so in a 0-0 game. Here's Stefan Yell, and it's saved by Nabokov in the NHL, but they are number one at home as Santa's Ozil is shot and stopped by Nabokov. The clock and the Sharks and Colorado Avalanche will play to a scoreless tie, and Yevgeny Nabokov gets a shutout in his National Hockey League debut as a starter. But I want to focus on one player in particular who gets in on a technicality. Just three years after getting taken fourth overall in 1997, the Islanders would trade away goaltender Roberto Luongo in a head scratching move so that they could select Rick DiPietro. But what many tend to forget is that Luongo managed to suit up for 24 games while on the island. He would get his first shutout in a 3 0 game against the Bruins and finish the year strong. Well, when it came time for him to make his Panthers debut, Luongo would once again be considered a rookie goaltender. He didn't qualify as one because he didn't play at least 26 games the year prior. And during his rookie season in Florida, his first shutout would be earned in a scoreless game. Two games changed everything for Luongo, and this crazy statistic is something I had to share. But if you think it's wild that two games changed history, try 7 years. When the Edmonton Oilers merged into the NHL in the 1979-80 season, they would receive the 21st overall pick, using their first ever selection on Quebec defenseman Kevin Lowe. Lowe was regarded as a strong leader and extremely dependable in the defensive zone, and when it came time for the Oilers to make their NHL debut, Lowe would make the opening night roster, and entered the league with a bang. Great play by Callaghan, though, and, and Lowe, great anticipation from his left point spot. Lowe would score the first ever NHL goal in Oilers history, and although they would lose 4-2, Lowe forever etched himself in the history books. Well, fast forward 17 years later, and after spending four years in New York with the Rangers, at age 37, Lowe would make a return to the Oilers. Now, most franchises by now would have had to at least been a part of one scoreless game, but not Edmonton, and headed into a December matchup against the Red Wings, that statement was still true. Well, that night, both goaltenders put on a show with Oilers netminder Curtis Joseph recording 52 saves, and after no one was able to land on the score sheet, the game would end 0-0, becoming the first scoreless tie in Oilers history. Well, 
Kevin Lowe participated in that game, making Edmonton history yet again, playing in the team's NHL debut back in 1979, and then 17 years later, playing in the team's first ever scoreless tie. At first glance, this entire topic may seem completely random, but due to the rules in place, it's now impossible for us to see a game end scoreless. And much like with any subject, you never truly know what interesting stories lie beneath until you begin to dig in. Researching this video was a boatload of fun, and perhaps if another crazy rule is invented, maybe history can be made yet again.